the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. We're here in Cosby, gonna hike and camp, do all sorts of fun stuff. And just listen to that freak go. Oh my gosh. How much rain did we have? All day yesterday, almost all day the day before. Yep. <laughs> but we are here. Oh, there's a turkey over there. Look at that. Huh. Well, anyway. I am en route to Hen Wallow Falls. This is a trail on the northeast side of the park. You can access it uh, via the Cosby Campground. And that's where I'm at right now. Um, sites here, I think, are almost $20 a night. They might be increasing the prices. I sure hope not. Um, we're back there in the RV site. And it's mostly a tent campground. No hookups, nothing like that. Before I get going on the Hen Wallow Falls Trail, I want to know that there are some bathhouses. You can't really see in the rain, but there's one on this upper loop, and there's another one uh, in the lower loop as well. All right, without further ado, Hen Wallow Falls. 2.2 miles that way. For the falls, it's a... Uh, the, the width of the falls is 2 feet and at the bottom of the falls is 20 feet so it's a really interesting uh, fan of water and this trail uh, is also known for several rocks now let me clear the camera there several rocks and roots so if you're someone that trips a lot I would not recommend this trail Now a couple years ago, I was here, and I basically just drove through the center of the park on um, Highway 441, I want to say. Beautiful drive, and at that time I hiked uh, the Charlie's Bunyan and Alum Cave Bluffs. Definitely trails I'd recommend. Doing those two trails in the same day, <laughs> oh man, my, my legs were crying. Oh, tough hikes, but worth it. And uh, if you just drive through the park, those are some good trails uh, to hit. But you gotta hit those trails early. This is like the most visited park in the country. Oh, but beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. There's looking downstream. Oh man, look at all these roots up here. Wow. Well, they weren't kidding when they said this trail's full of roots and rocks. Holy cow. So if you make a pit stop at this tree right here, you can uh, view all the engravings people have made over the years. Hard to tell with the uh, the lighting but somehow someone got their initials all the way up there I don't know who's gonna top that but the other reason I stopped here was to show off this guy right here look at this millipede look at his size look at that crazy I guess he's seeking higher ground look at all them legs <laughs> very cool all right you have a nice day stay dry I'm glad the rain has stopped. Uh, I was almost going to turn around um, back at that like first bridge or second bridge. But I'm glad I persevered and kept going. So now I'm about 2.1 miles into the hike, very close to Hen Wallow. And I am just blown away by these rocks right here. Oh, how cool is that? I wish I could explore up there, but they're just too slippery today. All right, so I see some signs up here. We must be uh, extremely close to Henwallow Falls. Whew. All right, so Gables Mountain continues all the way up to the uh, Madron Bald Trail, maybe even further. But today, 
We're gonna go to Henwallow Falls, which is 0.1 from here. Now this part right here is said to be really steep. Oh yeah, this is steep. Probably the steepest part of the trail is right here. So coming back up, oh man, that's gonna be, <laughs> that's gonna be quite exciting. And I guess it is a waterfall hike, so there had to be some, some downhill. Oh, but I'm so excited to see this waterfall. Now the Great Smoky Mountains uh, National Park has no uh, admission fee to get in the park. Usually where they charge you are like um, camping or uh, or like uh, like trail maps. Um, I know there's fees elsewhere, but so far that's just what it is. And it's totally worth it. Even, even if it is the most visited park in the country, it's worth checking out. Um, probably good all four seasons. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at the knobs on that tree. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, all right. We must be at Henwallow. So at long last, Henwallow Falls. And, uh, about 2.41 miles, so almost a five mile round trip hike. And you can tell the uh, span of the falls is very small at the top and at the bottom here, definitely fans out. Very cool. I almost forgot, it's time to for a water temperature check. <laughs> oh yeah, nice and chilly, but not too bad after all the rain. But with that being said, oh, look at that. We got another millipede, yeah, buddy. Looks like he's enjoying the waterfalls too. Look at him, a little bit smaller, still pretty big though. Good morning from the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. I am here today at the Madron Bald Trailhead and I am here going to hike to Albright Grove where the biggest trees and some of the oldest trees are said to be in the park. Um, here we are in the uh, parking lot. Um, decent amount of space, more than what I thought. Happy to see that. And this trail here is about seven miles round trip. Um, probably about 1,500 feet in elevation gain. And you can get to the AT this way after about eight miles. So here's some information about the trail. I was here the other day on the Gables Mountain, but today I'm going to Albright Grove, about three miles from here. Now to access this trailhead, um, it's right off U.S. Highway 321, and um, you want to look for Baxter Road. So far in the hike, um, this has been mostly a uh, gravel road. And I actually did see a park ranger um, vehicle drive down this road, so it does get used. But about at the 0.6A, 0.7 mile marker, we arrive at the uh, uh, Parker Cabin, I think. Now you can go inside and explore. I won't be doing that today, but it looks like it says it was built around 1829. Very cool. The main goal of uh, the Albright Grove Loop is to find the spur trail that leads to what I think is a tulip tree. Um, I think it's about 25 feet in circumference and Definitely over a thousand feet tall, maybe like 1350 if memory serves. But uh, looking forward to finding that and looking forward just to exploring this uh, area of the park. So a little after 2.2 miles in, the trail gets narrower and uh, looks like it also gets rocky. And uh, a little Rudy too, but definitely nothing like Hen Wallow Trail. At least I hope. I know a little bit further up, there's a, uh, uh, I think it's called a Tarzan Bridge. 
or just one of those bridges with one railing and oh my god look at the size of this tree holy crap gosh damn wow talk about a round oh my god oh my gosh just look at this thing oh my god wow oh my gosh oh oh that's probably let's see one two maybe two and a half feet across wow holy crap Talk about a, a chainsaw here. Oh man, giant pawpaws too. Huge leaves, wow. Oh. oh yeah, I guess it came from that tree right there. Yeah, big guy. Well, we must be getting close to the grove then. So about the 2.75 mile mark, I hit a rushing stream of water and uh and this awesome bridge right here and uh just a little bit further to all bright grove let's go So at long last, after 2.9 miles, I come to the Albright Grove Loop, which is to the right. <sighs> so uh, back to Gables Mountain is 1.7, but uh, obviously it's 2.9 from here to get back to the trailhead. So the Albright Grove Loop, I know it's hard to see with the rain. This, uh, this loop trail, this spur is 0.7 miles, and this is where the ascent really takes off, because as you get higher up, um, so does the mountain at the very top when these two trails here meet back up That's supposed to be the top of the mountain. So everything after that is downhill And uh, yeah already <laughs> some big trees Now I suppose you can go that way and come down the loop But it was recommended to go this way. So that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, I can't believe I made it. Oh, that was a brutal uphill climb. But this is actually where the real climb is. Oh yeah, I feel it. Oh man. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. This trail has actually been pretty good in terms of uh, mud and slippage. I haven't slipped at all. Barely any mud despite all this rain. So I'm really happy about that. Now this part of the trail right here is uh, named after a man named Albright. Um, I think he was a bit of a cons conservationist. I'm not sure if he worked for the park or uh, the civilian corps or something like that. He might have just been his own his own uh, uh, employer, but he was here looking over the trees and trails. So the uh, park decided to name this area after him. Now this area of Albright Grove is supposed to be like a deciduous old growth forest. And uh, <laughs> yep, that makes a lot of sense given all the uh, moss and uh, old growth trees, such as this big fella right here. Oh my gosh, look at this guy. Could almost fit inside. Wow. Oh, I gotta move my umbrella to get up the view like that. Ooh wee. Oh. Well, it could fit inside. Oh, look at that. It goes through. Oh, man. Yep. Definitely the steepest part of the hike. Holy cow. Oh, I'm feeling the burn. Oh. 
Oh, is this it? I think this is it. All right, I see the slight spur. Oh, yeah. I think this is it. All right. So, um, a little over halfway through the spur trail, um, an old brake grove, we come to the tulip tree. Oh, man. Oh, I got to get my umbrella around this thing. Oh, there we go. Let me see if I can set it down. Oh, all right. So this is the tulip tree. Wow. Like I said, about 1,350 feet in terms of height, 1,350, and about 25 feet all the way around. And if I go up to it, let's see now. Oh. Can't really get a full wingspan, but you can see this is this is a pretty massive tree. Wow. Wow. There's a big one all the way out there. Man, look how tall that guy is. Wow. Oh, I got some red wood right there. Oh man, it's a shame. Oh, it didn't get to its full height. Holy crap. Oh yeah, there's two of them. My brothers. That is crazy. And well, you know what? I think this will be today's tree of the day. Whether this is the tulip tree or not. Actually, it's not the tulip tree. Because the tulip tree is a thousand feet tall. This is <laughs> maybe 30 feet. Oh, man. But just massive. Oh, my gosh. What a monster, man. I think the rain is starting to get to me. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty soaked. 